Welcome to the GP Bikes Corduroy Enduro presented by KTM. From the Halliburton Highlands of Southern Ontario, Canada, I'm Pat Gonzalez along with seven-time Corduroy Enduro Champion Blair Sharpless. And Blair, this is the 64th running of the Corduroy Enduro. It is also a family legacy for you. That's right, Pat. My dad rode the first one in 53, and my whole family's ridden it since then. It's in our blood. The corduroy has always been Canada's toughest enduro, and for good reason. It's a two-day event in some of the toughest terrain we have here in Ontario. It's also how the corduroy got its name. Back in the day, logs were laid along a particularly difficult section to bridge mud and rock. This formed a bumpy log surface road dubbed corduroy. We still use this method of corduroy construction to build trails for certain stages of the corduroy enduro to help riders get through the mud holes that are otherwise seemingly bottomless. Blair, you designed this year's two-day course. What does day one look like? Day one has eight time stages connected together by transit sections. So the riders are gonna leave the start, gravel road transit down to Scott and Sue's, great nice trail, rock, flow from there. After that, they got another gravel road transit to the Miserable Lake Trail, classic corduroy trail. And after the Miserable Lake Trail, we've got the Burnt River Crossing, which is part of the transit, but it's going to cause a lot of trouble for the riders. Into Gas 1, Sedgwick's Pit, which is like a motocross test. And then they got the rail trail all the way down to the MNR Trail. MNR is a brand new trail, so the riders are going to have a hard time finding their way through that trail. After that, we have a difficult transit section down to the ski trail. Ski trail, longest trail of the whole weekend, longest stage. After a short rest in the gas stop, they go into another long, difficult stage, including the Tunnel of Love, and into Morgan's. Out of Morgan's, a little bit of a rest on some gravel road until they get the Blackberry Trail. Blackberry Trail, brand new trail last year, long stage, very tight, technical, and difficult. Onto the rail trail, transit up gravel road to our last stage of the day which is four wheelers four wheelers brand new stage again it's short but it's very tight and twisty and they're going to have a hard time those first riders find their way through and then gravel road transit back to the finish impound their bikes in this year's court we're following the pro class and we have some of the top Canadian entries with ISDE, Junior Trophy Team Medalist Jared Jonker, and Ryder Heacock, who is also the defending off-road Ontario Grand Champion. We also have Ontario riders led by local favorite Aaron Wilkins, who has been on the podium before and looking for his first overall cord win. Kevin Block, Jeremy Quinn, Peter Rutziger, Zach Lewis, Tyler Saunders, Mike Bulgarelli, Ken Beach, Ben Roth, and Connor Brogan are some of the other top riders to watch. And from La Belle Provence, Quebec, a talented group of riders including the always fast Philippe Cheney, along with Jeremy Dottelin, Jermaine Perron, Theo Lepley, Frederick Bluon, Francis Corsell, Jean Derek Cote, and Jeremy Lantier. A talented group of riders. Blair, who are your favorites to pull off the overall win? Well, I think all those riders you mentioned, Pat, are going to play a part in some of the stages. But my three favorites for the overall are obviously Philip Cheney, Aaron Wilkins, and Zach Lewis. Those three, any one of them could win. But if I had to pick one, I'm going to give it to Philip Cheney just because of his experience. He's got more cords under his belt and he's fast. Getting ready for the starting area and Blair, this is where the riders leave in that transition to the actual start of the first wave. There we see one of the riders you mentioned, Zach Lewis, just 21 years of age from Pawnee Pool. He's got a good shot on that Yamaha. That's right, Pat. He's got a couple experts who've lined up beside him, but where's Cheney? Cheney should be on the line, but he's not there. And there's Lewis. He heads off along with the two expert riders, Graham Robotham and Mike Brueggemann, but no Cheney. Cheney better get to the line soon. We've got row two up there. Cheney has to start before row two leaves the line. If he doesn't, he will be assessed 60 penalty points. And that'll really put him behind the eight ball that you see some of the other riders as they prepare to go. And there's Cheney. Cheney has moved up here He's finally. made it now. He's just made it in time. He's getting his transponder scan and he'll head off. 
it's no issue for him now, a little stressful maybe getting to the line because he's got a long transit section. He'll be able to get back on time. Our fourth group of riders, there's the 4A machine, Jared Jonker out of Brockville, Ontario, just 20 years of age on the beta. Also starting here is the 4D machine, that is Jeremy Dodlin on the KTM. One of the riders to watch here in this 10th group, Connor Brogan, 22 years of age out of Palgrave, Ontario on the Husqvarna. Yeah, Connor's another third generation rider. He and his sister have both ridden the cord before, their dad and their grandfather makes all the trophies for the corduroy. Connor now helps with making those trophies, the beautiful logs we give out at the end of the weekend. These riders preparing to head off down to the start of the first stage as they work their way by the GP Bikes pop-up store you see there on the right. And there goes Aaron Wilkins, one of our favorites for this weekend. He's a local boy. In fact, the course goes right by his house. Stage one of the Corduroy Enduro, Scott and Suze, a five kilometer run on these very challenging trails. There you see Lewis on the Yamaha just ahead of Cheney on the KTM. And now Cheney has moved around. So it is Cheney leading Lewis as they approach the finish of the run. Yeah, it looks like they've stuck together the whole way through, probably pulling each other through a little faster. It's gonna maybe be a good strategy being on the same row. There they're underneath the transponder now. And they look like they've had pretty pleased with their ride. And that's about a second apart, and the two riders discussing that first stage. Yeah, this is one of the shortest stages of the event, and so they've, but they've been in there for 10 minutes. Here's Jared Jonker on the beta, another one of our pro riders who is on the charge, as he is about to complete this opening stage as well, where you can see some of the other riders chasing him through the trails and here is Ryder Heacock on the Yamaha. He has had a solid run here on this opening stage as well. Looking at 11A on the KTM, Aaron Wilkins from Minden, Ontario about to finish this opening stage and it looks like he's got a pretty good run going. Yeah, we've got uh, top five riders through now. Cheney was number one, one second back was Zach. Then we had Aaron Wilkins, 14 back. Only two behind him was Jared, and then Ryder right there too. So I kind of like the fact that my top three picks are one, two, and three in this short warm-up section. Looked pretty easy for the pros, but now we see what it was really like. We got the amateurs in there. Real tough section here. You see there's one motorcycle down, a couple others stopped on the trail. This rider backing up, trying to find a way around as our onboard camera gives us a great shot here of just how difficult this little section of the trail is and still hasn't got around as uh, waiting for that other rider to get their motorcycle picked up. So the amateurs finding the going tough here in this opening stage. All right, well, I think we better get over to the Miserable Lake the next stage and see what the pros are doing there. On to stage number two. The pro riders have already completed their runs. We're on board here with the Smithers BC rider, Alex Christie and Blair giving us some great shots here as to how tough this section is. This is classic corduroy. This is the miserable lake trail. We've used it even back when I was riding. It's got everything, beaver dams, mud, rocks, logs. It's just a great trail for the test. Taking a look at the pro results, Philip Cheney completed a great run. He is your winner. Aaron Wilkins in second, Frederick Blue in third, Jared Yonker in fourth, Kevin Block rounds out the top five, but Zach Lewis, a terrible run, almost a minute back of Cheney. That's gonna drop him down from his second position that he was at the end of stage one. A look at the rocks in the Burnt River. That is what these riders will have to cross to get to the first gas stop. There you see your stage one and two winner. That is Philippe Cheney as he crosses the river. And now Zach Lewis 
who had a disastrous second stage. He'll try to rebound in stage number three. And you can see Blair very, very difficult getting over those rocks as he has made it clearly through to the other side. And now we look at Jared Jonker on the beta. You've got to be very careful here. This is the transition point. Had to put his foot down to keep that motorcycle upright as the rider. Oh, and he has gone down. Oh. That's bad for Jared. He's filled the bike full of water for sure. He's gonna have to see if he can get the water out of it and stay on schedule. He's lucky though, we got a gas stop right after. He's got 15 minutes of the gas. He's gonna have to push his bike out of the water, turn the bike upside down, get the spark plug out of it, and pump all the water out of the motor. If he tries to just start it now, he's just gonna bend the piston rod. So it's, it's really bad for him, but it's not a bad spot for it to happen since we have a gas stop right after it. Well, he's all by himself right now, and he's got to do some uh, repairs to get that motorcycle refired. Here is Tyler Saunders, the uh, expert rider, as he makes his way across the river on the KTM. He will get through there cleanly, and it looks like he's going to stop and give Jared Jonker a hand to make the repairs to that motorcycle. A great show of sportsmanship. Yeah, and Juros are a lot more camaraderie. You know, it's it really is man against the trail. Here we see Rome Haloftis coming across on his beta. And he will get across there cleanly as we work our way to the gas stop that's coming up next. There's one of the fine Quebec riders, Jeremy Dodelin, currently 15th overall after probably a little bit of a disappointing uh, stage one and two. Yeah, I think we'll see better from Jeremy as the event goes on. You can see how the riders are going a little bit down the river and making an arc across the river. That's because if they went straight across, it's very deep and they wouldn't even have to fall over to water out. It's just over their motors and over their air boxes if they come straight across. So they're all taking that route to the right and making sort of like a crescent shape and come across. The problem is, is the rocks underneath as we saw in that first footage. And it doesn't matter how good a rider you are, you hit the rock, you can't see it. The only person who saw the rocks was Philip Cheney, first one across. There's Ryder Heacock. Ryder Heacock currently sitting seventh overall as he heads to stage number three. And now we look at Aaron Wilkins aboard that KTM. That's how it's done. On the pegs, just cruises across. I think the local boy has a little local knowledge. Knows where to be in this river. The riders continue to have difficulty. Oh, and there's Daniel Zuck. He just submarines that number 8D machine. Remember what I was saying, Pat, about the wrong line through this river. It's uh, really deep on the one side. Oh, Derek Cote scares a few spectators there. That's the wrong line, too. At least there's no deep water there. He didn't water out and he'll be off and rolling pretty quickly. We're at the gas stop as we look at the overall leader, Philip Cheney, doing his own maintenance on the KTM. Zach Lewis and Ryder Heacock getting a bit of a break here as they prepare for the battle coming up in stage three. Oh, there's Chris Costello. He's one of our expert riders. Looks like he's having a clutch issue here. Hopefully it's just an adjustment and he'll be able to get back into it. Pretty good. Let's go see if we can find out why Zach lost so much time in Miserable Lake. lost like 10 seconds in Miserable Lake when right in mud hole. So it was good though, like up to there I was riding well. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good right now. My bike's looking pretty good. I felt kind of slow in the first one and then Miserable Lake was pretty good. Tunnel of Love would be great. Would be really, really great. Yes. Yes, me, I come here for the, the, the Ardennes Trail. Oh. Yes, I like Ardor Trail. <laughs> yeah, no, today's going really good. Uh, it's super dry. Almost got stuck in the Irondale and Miserable Lakes was pretty gnarly, but uh, all in all, really good day. Really, really fun. I'm actually having, uh, having a good time. Where do we go from here? Getting ready for stage number three of the Corduroy Enduro. There you see Zach Lewis. Currently sitting fifth, looking to move up, and that first group is away, and our leader, Cheney, grabs the early lead. This is a very tough and demanding, almost a little bit more motocross like this particular stage player. Yes, but the big difference is no one rides in the pit all year. We just go in there, ribbon it all out. Dave Rax, our man in the second pit, and 
so the riders really don't know what they're looking at unless they take some of their gas stop time and walk around. How tough is this? How much of a transition do you have to make from those first two stages here to this kind of surface? Well, this is quite a bit different, and we'll see riders who are good at the motocross, they'll do better in this test. Looking at Jared Jonker, who currently sits third overall, 41 seconds back of our leader, Philippe Cheney. Yeah, it's great to see Jared on the line after watering out in the Burnt River there. He's got the bike running, hasn't cost him a second, and he's uh, he's did very well in that miserable lake section. He loves the tight, technical, tough stuff. Riders preparing to fire off the line here into that Sedgwick pit. As they charge into turn number one, there is Aaron Wilkins, an interested spectator. He'll be going a little bit later on. And yeah, Aaron, you can see the advantage of running a later number. This pit, the riders don't know it. And they, uh, Aaron's out there checking it out, checking out some lines. Some of the riders during the gas stop will wander over and check out the course because they don't know it ahead of time unless they get here early Friday and get a chance to walk. Stage three completed here at the Corduroy Enduro. Aaron Wilkins takes his first stage win. Three seconds clear of our overall leader, Philippe Cheney. Zach Lewis, a good run up to finish third. That'll move him up. Ryder Heacock in fourth. Kevin Block rounding out our top five. And in fact, just 11 seconds separated the top five pro riders. Racing on stage four, the m &R Trail, the fourth of eight stages here that make up day one of the Corduroy Enduro. We look at our points leader, Philippe Cheney, along with Zach Lewis as they battle around this section that's pretty much brand new, Blair. Here's some of the problem with being the first riders. There's not a lot of trail to fall. This is one of our virgin trails. It means no one's been through it other than the guys who laid it out. It makes it very difficult for the first riders through. I see a rider on a later number doing very well in this stage. Looking at Jared Jonker, who continues to put in a great ride, and boy, this looks like a very tough section. Yeah, I think they're going to have a real problem. The later riders, I see Aaron Wilkins on number 11 having a very good run through here. Looking at Quebec rider Jermaine Perron on that number 6C machine, having a pretty good run here in stage number 4. Here is Ryder Heacock on the Yamaha, having a great run here in stage four. Oh, here comes Connor. Looks like Connor's lost his number plate. He's got sporting a duct tape number plate. Didn't seem to slow him down, though. He's got a good run going. Came in here, tent, looking to move up in the overall standings as we come to the conclusion of this stage four of eight here on day number one. Looking at our final results of stage four, the m &R Trail, Ryder Heacock with a great run, finishes five seconds ahead of Aaron Wilkins. Theo Lepley, his best run so far here today, just eight seconds back. Jared Jonker in fourth, Jeremy Godlin in fifth, and our leader, Philippe Shaney, 39 seconds back, a disastrous fourth stage. That's gonna knock him off of the overall first place spot. This is the trade-off I talked about earlier, being on number one. They have no track to follow. But in the other trails, they have no one to pass because they're right front. It's a real trade-off. We'll see how it plays out. Looking at a great battle here between two of our pro riders, Philip Cheney, who was the leader. There you could see two different lines as Zach Lewis awesome. grabs the big jump. Cheney elected to go to the left and along the trail, but these two riders are going at it just seconds apart after almost 30 minutes of racing. Yeah, it's incredible in this heat that they're, they've stuck together like this. They must be having a great time out there. Looking at Jared Jonker, he's gonna take the same path as Philippe Cheney as he works his way around. Looks like he has got another solid run going here in our cross country trail stage as he tries to chase down that front running pair of Philip Cheney and Zach Lewis. Yeah, I'm impressed with Jared's riding. He's just so consistent, and for such a young guy, does a great job. H5 at the Corduroy Enduro is the cross country ski trail yeah. stage, and this is a very, very demanding part of the course. 
Yeah, the first part of it is your standard Northern Ontario rock, lots of mud, things like that. Near the end, though, it goes into sandy, beautiful trails the guys love ripping in. On board with Alex Christie, the Smithers BC rider, taking a run through the monorail here as he comes up on another rider just ahead of him. And there you see Frederick Bluan right by the Christie machine as he was stuck behind him on that monorail. They're just coming into the Enduro Cross section, the little Enduro Cross section at the end of the test. Looking at the results of stage five of the Corduroy Enduro, Philip Cheney wins his third stage of the five runs so far. Zach Lewis with a solid run, just six seconds back. Connor Brogan in third, Aaron Wilkins fourth. That's gonna drop him out of the overall lead. And rounding out the top five, Jared Jonker with another solid top five finish. I think it's great to see Connor Brogan finally break into the top three. Obviously had a very good ride through that section. Stage five complete. We go to our second gas stop of the day, and Blair, this is quite a scene here. Yeah, this is what the riders who can't get a crew to come with them do. One man show. Can, water tape to it, tools, parts, goggles, gloves. They got to take care of themselves. Our first and second place riders from stage five comparing notes as they make their way to the gas stop. Five stages down, three to go. Here's Tony Sharpless with Zach Lewis. It was good. He was stuck in a hole, so I had to help him out, or else I was going to fall off the bridge. So. Oh, yeah. that's cool teamwork out there. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So he's kind of pulling me along, to be honest. Like, <laughs> if he's helping me out, I feel like I should do him a favor. I go in the, the other, uh, bridge, and I fall under the bridge. And Zach helped me to climb my bike. You went for a swim in the, in the burnt river? Yeah, I watered the bike out, but got it going again, so it's all oh. good. Very, very fast. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> All good. Well, you're doing well. It's a fast course, isn't it? Yes, pretty good. Thank you. Ryder Heacock rolls in. I think that was not a good stage for him, as it looks like he will finish eighth overall in that stage and put him back in the overall standing. So it looks like they may have had some kind of a problem with that bike blend. We're using a super soft tire this weekend, and I think with the heat, hit it on the road, it got hot and it popped off the beat. The beat on this side, Dustin? Well, that's, I think it broke the right here. so good, he's still in it, so that's a good thing. He's had a few, yeah, he's had a few small baubles, but nothing too serious, and uh, bike's still all together and looking good. And so with his win in stage five, Philippe Shaney has taken over the overall lead, 12 seconds clear of Aaron Wilkins. Zach Lewis continues to put in solid rides. He sits third, Jared Jonker fourth, Connor Brogan rounds out the top five, then Ryder Heacock drops from fourth to sixth, Frederic Bluon in seventh, eighth is Kevin Block, ninth Jean Derek Cote, and Theo Lepley rounds out our top 10 with three stages to go here in day one of the Corduroy Enduro. We go to stage six of the Corduroy Enduro. This one called Morgan's with a very difficult tunnel section. We saw Cheney get away first, Lewis electing not to go with him. He's dropped back into the second group. Yeah, I think this is because of the dust. A lot of sandy trail here before they get to the tunnel. And in that last section, the last kilometer, Zach lost six seconds to Cheney. I think it was because of dust. There goes Yonkers off. And now we look at Aaron Wilkins on the KTM. Wilkins looking to move up. He's currently sitting second behind Cheney as he is away. And here's Jean Derrick taking off. He's gone too. They're all headed up the tunnel. And there's uh, Connor Brogan still sporting that duct tape number plate. I guess he doesn't have a spare with him this weekend. We've reached one of the most popular spectating spots on this stage, and that is the tunnel. As we see the first little riders to go through, that is Philip Cheney, our current overall leader. They go around that little hairpin back into the river, and now into the tunnel. This is not gonna be easy, Blair. No, we only send the expert pro classes through here. As you can see, one rider gets stuck, he jams it all up. There's a rock right before this climb out of the water. Wet rock is very slippery. Even Cheney's having a hard time. He 
He's adjusting there. He's got some traction, and away he goes. Finally, that knobby tire hooks up on that metal grate. Here is Zach Lewis, who is the second rider away. Cheney and Lewis have had some monumental side-by-side -side battles, and now Lewis has got a problem. He's got that rear knobby tire on top of the rock. He's going to try to reposition that Yamaha and take another run at it. Yeah, as you can see, our favorite helpers there again, just getting them lined up. These good riders, they just take their time, look at it, line it up properly, and up they go. Here is Brockville, Ontario's Jared Jonker on that beta as he attacks the tunnel. Oh, and he gets that front wheel off of the steel ramp, and he's going to have a real struggle trying to get it up and over. He may need a little bit of help here as he uh, is back on the motorcycle and still having problems. This is going to cost him a lot of time. Yeah, and he's, oh, and here comes Dodlin, Jeremy Dodlin. Oh, Jonker's off to the side. Dodlin sneaks through. That's a lucky for him. Jonker's is losing a lot of time here. Now here comes uh, our, our favorite uh, helper, Greg Morrison, in there to get Jonker back on track. You can see the rock, there's absolutely no traction. Here's Kevin Block, the Dundas, Ontario rider on the KTM, having a little bit of difficulty there, getting momentum, but he gets up the ramp. He got good traction on that metal grate. As we look at Matthew Perry, the expert class rider fighting his way through the tunnel, and those wet rocks are just like glass, that knobby tire just having a lot of difficulty getting traction. Frederick Bluen going through as he is up over the ramp, and oh, it is Eric Langford who launches his bike off the ramp. A disastrous run into the tunnel by expert rider Eric Langford. There you see him trying. And, and now he's got the tunnel blocked, and you know who's coming, Aaron Wilkins. Aaron Wilkins is, is right behind him. He looks like there's a rider waiting in the river. I wonder if that's Aaron. It is Aaron waiting at the top of the ramp for the uh, passage to clear here. Looks like uh, he is back on the motorcycle as Aaron Wilkins trying to get that rider ahead of him to move so he can get, he's losing a lot of time. Yeah, I heard Aaron there yelling at him to pull his bike to the side, he did. And there goes Aaron through and we've got another rider coming through right behind him. This is why the tunnel, it's a great spot, but you know, there's just one line. And so if one guy gets stuck in there, it's a luck of the draw. And here comes Jean Derrick out the end of the tunnel, making it look nice and easy. And isn't that nice? I built a nice ramp for him to get out of the river, Pat. Oh, you're so kind, Blair, as we see some of the other riders having their problems getting through that tunnel section. But again, uh, they still have a long, long way to go to the finish. Connor Brogan having his difficulties as well. Yeah, actually, I shouldn't lie. I didn't make the ramp. Kirk Holden standing there to the side, he made the ramp. And we continue to watch these pro and expert riders come through the tunnel, but I don't think anybody has got through there without having to face some kind of uh, adversity. And there you see one of those riders just almost getting the motorcycle stuck down between the rocks and the wall of that tunnel. And it's shower time in the tunnel. Yeah, it looks like the roost in the tunnel. At least it's clean. Oh, it looks like maybe some of the spectators are going to get a shower too. Here is this rider, yeah, he's got to get off and get lined up. You can't waste your time. Here he is, drag the rear end over. And there's Chris Costello. Triple C throws her down at the bottom of the grate. That's his brother grabbing a hold of the bike, giving him a hand. We don't really discourage spectators from helping out, as long as they help everybody. Oh, and that's Matthew Rose, I believe, who's dropped his motorcycle right at the top of the ramp. That is Ted Wilkins, Aaron Wilkins' dad, trying to help him to get that motorcycle up and into the tunnel. But right now, it is blocked. Nobody going anywhere. Yeah, this is why we only run the experts and pros through. Could you imagine if we put the amateurs in here too? They just, they would be still there. All of the pro and expert riders have made their way through the tunnel and they have completed stage six. Let's look at the top five. It is Aaron Wilkins with his second stage win of the day, followed by Philippe Cheney, 
Then it is Zach Lewis in third, Kevin Block fourth, and Connor Brogan rounds out our top five, and that is gonna put Aaron Wilkins back into the overall lead. Into stage seven, the Blackberry Trail, as we look at Alex Christie, the British Columbia rider, preparing to head off on uh, this stage, carrying our onboard camera. And Blair, this is a new stage in terms of the terrain that was modified from last year. Yeah, last year we had the bottom fall out of a few spots and we lost half our riders in this trail. So new trail, it's very tight, very tough, long, over eight kilometers long. Riders don't get a chance to sit down much in it. And it's gonna be interesting to see who goes well in this trail. And so with stage number seven complete, it is Jared Jonker who grabs his first stage win of the day. Philip Cheney right behind, but 33 seconds behind in second. He'll pick up a second on Aaron Wilkins, who comes home in third, Zach Lewis fourth, and Jean Derek Cote rounds out the top five. set for four wheelers, the eighth and final stage of day one of the Corduroy Enduro as we look at Philip Cheney on that orange KTM being chased by Zach Lewis on the Yamaha. These two riders, Blair, have been going at it pretty much all day long and no difference here in this final stage as they work this brand new trail section and for the moment, Cheney continues to lead Lewis as Lewis follows in his tracks as they go, Lewis puts it on the ground. It looked like he just planted that front wheel, picks it up right away and continues to chase down that orange KTM of Philip Cheney. Yeah, the two of them, you got the freight train going again. That really, you go through what's a lot faster, two of you. They actually changed the lead in there four and five times. Very hard to be the first guys through a brand new trail. Just two seconds separating those two riders at the finish. Here's Jared Jonker on the beta machine looking to put in another top finish. And right behind him is Jeremy Dodlin, the Quebec rider on the KTM, as they work the final section here of stage eight called Four Wheelers. Looking at Connor Brogan, who is leading a big pack of riders here, the Palgrave, Ontario rider, just 22 years of age on that Husqvarna, but he has got a pack of riders chasing him as he continues to ride aggressively oh. here, and oh, just about planted that front end, Blair. Yeah, it must have caught a rock or a log in there. Connor Brogan trying to stay ahead of those riders, and he is on the ragged edge here. He's almost gone down a couple of times, but continues to run ahead of this chasing pack that are also charging and right on the ragged edge. And oh, there is number 10D, that is Francis Corsal, but he picked it up right away and he will continue. Here is your overall points leader, Aaron Wilkins, trying to hold on to that overall lead through this final stage. Here you see the Jean Derek Cote machine as uh, Wilkins looks like he's having a real solid run through this section trying to hang on. The other rider there with them is Olivier Lamontagne, but it is Wilkins with a solid run here so I far. I like watching Aaron ride. He's just so smooth. He doesn't look like he's going fast. I, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes, Aaron. Just smooth, calm, cool, and he's obviously on. Look, Jean Derrick's got passed by Lamontagne. And there is Olivier Lamontagne trying to hold off uh, Jean Derrick Cote. There is the 5C machine of Ryan Zanelli, the expert rider. Beside him, also on a Yamaha, is the pro rider, Ryder Heacock, as the two riders head off here on this final stage. And it is the pro rider, Heacock, leading oh, the expert. Ryder hit that same rock that Connor did and almost lost the front end. Well, he was able to gather it back up, but now he's pulled several bike lengths ahead of Zanelli as they work this Final stage here, very technical and difficult section, and of course, brand new for all of these riders. Yeah, here's Zanelli. Oh, oh and Zanelli into the trees. The Look. motorcycle goes down. There's some of the spectators who saw that crash. He'll get back on the motorcycle and the protective gear obviously doing its job. Kevin Block will be the first of the riders away in this group. He's currently running seventh overall 
and out with him is Christian Berker, one of the expert riders, as well as our top intermediate rider there, Andrew McGill, on the number 13C machine. So the pace about the same among a pro, a expert, and an intermediate rider, and it was Lantier who was away last of the group. He may have got to that oh, start late. Oh, he, he found Connor's Rock, too. But nice line in the corner makes up the time. He's already in front of Block. Well, he is on the charge. Remember, Block, the pro rider, came in here seventh overall. And Lanti has been able to get around him as we see some of the spectators here. And so Aaron Wilkins wins stage eight for Wheelers by three seconds over Philip Cheney. And so he will have the overall points lead going to day two of the Corduroy Enduro. Coming home second was Philip Cheney, three seconds back. Zach Lewis, another solid run in third. He was just five seconds back of the leader, followed by Jared Jonker, and then Jeremy Lantier with that great ride. He finishes fifth overall, his best finish of any stage today. Day number one of the Corduroy Enduro is now complete. You see some of the amateur riders wheeling their motorcycles back to that impound area. Yeah, once the riders get to the finish, they have 15 minutes to work on their bike. 15 minutes are up, they have to be at the final time clock. Shut the bikes off, push them in. No one touches them till the morning. Well, it is Aaron Wilkins who will take a 15 second advantage over Philip Cheney into day number two. Zach Lewis with some solid rides all day long. He finishes in third overall at the end of day one. Jared Jonker fourth, Connor Brogan fifth. And then the rest of your top 10, Ryder Heacock, Kevin Block, Frederick Bluon, Jean Derek Cote, and Theo Lepley round out our top 10 here at the end of day one. But we've got a tough and demanding day two coming up here at the court. Yeah, quick count, and we've got 182 bikes in the impound tonight. Started off at approximately 250 riders, so we're, we're normally a 50% finishing rate here at the Corduroy, so I'm sure we'll lose some more tomorrow on Sunday, day two. So that's it from day one of the Corduroy Enduro for Blair Sharpless and our entire ballistic film crew. This is Pat Gonzalez saying so long from the Halliburton Highlands. On an unseasonably warm Sunday morning here in the Halliburton Highlands, some 182 motorcycles prepared to do battle here in day two of the Corduroy Enduro. Yeah, the riders are allowed to get their bike out of the impound, push it into the work area, but the pros and experts, the only one who can touch the motorcycle is the rider. The amateurs, we let them have a mechanic in the work area to help them out. So the riders got to do it all themselves. Check it over, make sure they got fuel, and get ready to go. And so Blair, for the riders who had uh, a great opening day, they're pumped, they know they've got a shot at the championship. There's our points leader, Aaron Wilkins, his Hall of Fame father, Ted Wilkins, right there with him. And here we have Natasha LaChapelle fueling up her own bike. She's leading the women's pro class this time. Connor Brogan, I think he's liking his duct tape number plate. He didn't even put a new one on for day two. So. And there's a young lady that you're familiar with, uh, your daughter, preparing to go out here, made it through day one. Yeah, thank you. And of course, there is Aaron Wilkins, points leader at the end of day one. He won three of the eight stages. These guys are smiling a little too much. I'm gonna have to make it a little tougher. Of course, with this hot weather, we've had no rain for a while. The course is easier but the hot weather is, is what's caused the attrition in the riders. Getting set for another grueling eight stages of the Corduroy Enduro coming up. Well, those riders who made it through day one now face eight more demanding stages, Blair. Yes, today, a little shorter day, but they don't get the rest on the transits, on the roads. Most of the transits are trail today. So first test is Greens Mountain. Short test, but it's an extreme rocky climb. Then they got a gas stop right away. Then we go into the butt test, which is where we have our cabin and our beer pit. 
Then on to the Hunt Camp Trail, really grueling test. Lots of obstacles in there, bridges and mud holes. Gas 2 down on the Fire Access Road, and then on to Fast Eddies. Another test, 7.4 kilometers long. After that, they have a long transit, all trail, to the Penn State test. Another 5K test, another one that starts off really tight and then opens up a bit, but when it opens up, there's lots of mud. Gas 3, right into Big Baldy, come out of Big Baldy, then they go into Scott and Sue's again, and then gravel road back to the finish. We impound them. Once we have all the pros at the finish, they do the enduro cross. Row seven riders out of the impound area as they roll off the stage. There is 7A rider Heacock currently sitting sixth. Theo Lepley will follow him. And then we've got a couple of the expert riders, Chris Cuthbert Costello, currently second among the expert riders, but he's four and a half minutes back. Now we go to row eight. Kevin Block and Peter Rutziger will be the two riders to roll off here down to the beginning of stage one. There is Cheney on the KTM trying to make up the 15 points. He's back of the overall leader, Aaron Wilkins, and running right with him, Zach Lewis, who's putting in a great ride here. Yeah, the Greens Mountains, like the highway this year with no rain for so many weeks. It's so easy with uh, flat rocks, just like riding on pavement. Here's another fast pair, Jared Jonker on the Beta, Jeremy Dodlin on the KTM as those two riders battle just a couple of bike lengths apart. And as you said, Blair, a little bit easier, but it is not easy. Yeah, it's still a pretty steep hill, but uh, they're getting traction where before they had none with this dry weather. Jared Jonker on the beta, Jeremy Godlin aboard the KTM, continue to run close together. And now we go to Ryder Heacock. And oh, we've got an amateur rider over in the side there. Uh, he'll get around him, so the amateur rider off the trail, but rider Heacock on that number 7A machine looking to move up here on day two. Yeah, he's making the four-stroke uh, hook up well on the rocks. And we go back to another one of our top pro riders, Connor Brogan, ended day one in fifth. And again, another rider looking to make an impact here in stage number one as he works his way through this opening stage of day two of the Corduroy Enduro. Now we go back to the overall leader coming into day number two, Aaron Wilkins, but it was a slim lead of just 15 seconds. Not a whole lot of time, Blair, considering yeah. all the racing we've got here today. You no, know, Aaron, he just, I can't get over a smoothie. Let's say Connor, let's yeah. please with his ride. How was uh, Green Mountain, Connor? Absolutely awesome. And Connor Brogan should be Blair. There you see a solid fourth place finish on the Husqvarna, but the stage win goes to Aaron Wilkins, some 10.9 seconds ahead of Philip Cheney, Zach Lewis in third, Brogan, and then we saw the rest of the top five. Gas stop completed. We go to Mark Butts Farm. This one's called the Butt Test. Interesting stage, including a portion of the course that goes right through that abandoned cabin, and there is the beer pit. Some of the local characters enjoying the festivities here at the Corduroy and helping to fill up that beer can pit. Corduroy TV rocks. Getting set for the start of stage two, the butt test. The cabin will be all part of that as we prepare to go here with our first group. There you see Zach Lewis on the Yamaha, currently sitting third, trying to chase down Philip Cheney. This, this is different, Pat. Cheney hasn't gone with him. This is the first time we've seen them not ride together. Well, they've been together in pretty much all of the stages so far, but Lewis going out here solo, he's going to try to set the fast pace, sitting third. He knows he's got to make up time on both Aaron Wilkins and on Philip Cheney. He was kind of tentative through the beer pit there. I was surprised he didn't try to jump it. There's Cheney through the cabin as he chases Lewis here. 26 seconds back of our overall leader, Aaron Wilkins. He'll try to make up some time here in this stage two. There's lots of long stages today. Tough, the physical condition will come in. I think you're gonna see a, a tight race. He's gonna make some time on Aaron. As we continue to roll here, 
with Jared Jonker now out here, row number four. He'll go out along with Jeremy Dodlin, two of our riders who are battling to stay within the top ten. I see all the riders are a little worried about this beer pit. It's not that far apart. The logs should be able to just flip the throttle and jump over them, but uh, I guess they're not taking the chances. It's a long test. And we look at Kevin Block, who is part of the group eight that heads off through the cabin. Three riders close together as they begin the run, and oh, and Block has gone down. And that's Costello coming around, and looks like Costello started with them a minute late. Here's Connor Brogan coming off that fine fourth place finish in that opening stage as he continues to run just ahead of those two riders chasing. And, and again, we've got the cautious approach to the pit. Our overall points leader, Aaron Wilkins, is through the cabin, holding a 26 second advantage over Philip Cheney. As we work stage number two of day two, Wilkins getting over that obstacle. Now a bit of air off of that jump. Here he comes through the right-hander, headed for the beer pit. And oh, he plants that front wheel and just about crashes off the motorcycle. That was a great save, Blair. Yes, I bet you his wrists are sore now. I can't believe he saved that. Oh, even Bigfoot gets excited with that save by Aaron Wilkins. The results of the second stage has Philip Cheney with the win, Zach Lewis second, Aaron Wilkins disappointed run finishing third, Connor Brogan, and Frederick Bluan on the KTM round out the top five. That has really tightened up the overall here in the Corduroy Enduro. Aaron Wilkins' lead is down to just four seconds over Philip Cheney. Zach Lewis continues to hold third as we go to stage three, the hunt camp. Yeah, and in the Hunt Camp Trail, there's several places where there could be bottlenecks. There's lots of bridges, mud holes, and Aaron's number, someone could be stuck in front of him, could cost him a lot of time. Well, the results of our Stage 3 Hunt Camp run shows the win going to Philip Cheney, but back in fifth was Wilkins, 29 seconds back. That gives the lead, the overall lead, to Philip Cheney on his KTM by some 26 seconds. That's Aaron's worst finish all weekend so far. Obviously, he's had some issue in there to be that far behind Philip. Well, the results of Fast Eddies, Philip Cheney again with the win. A little better for Wilkins, but he's back in third and he loses some additional time. He is now 34 seconds back of the overall leader, Philip Cheney. Yeah, Jared Jonker had a very good ride through Fast Eddies, only two seconds off Philip Cheney's time. That's a great ride for the first year pro. For Aaron Wilkins, back in fourth, another disappointing stage. He now trails the overall leader, Philip Cheney, by some 50 seconds. Yeah, it's too bad. I thought Aaron would make a run back at him, but it looks like Philip's in command now. Let's go see what the riders have to say at gas three. A bunch of little mistakes, but other than that, just holding it wide. Yeah. No number plates really helping. I feel like it's really helping with aerodynamics, and uh, the duct tape's just 10 horsepower, so. It's been pretty good so far. The tests are shorter than yesterday, so it's better because we're all tired and a little sore. Well, for Aaron Wilkins, if he was going to make a move, this is the stage where he had to make it right here at Big Baldy. But at the end of the run, it was Philip Cheney winning his fifth stage in a row here in day number two. A great ride by Zach Lewis and Jean Derek Cote, Quebec rider on the KTM, had his best finish of the Corduroy Enduro. Wilkins was all the way back in sixth and now trails the overall leader, Philip Cheney, by a minute and 17 seconds, Blair. That is almost insurmountable with just two stages to go. Scott and Sue's our final stage through the woods. We got Zach Lewis into the stage. He's looking fast. I'm sure he knows he can catch Aaron. He's only 50 seconds back for second place. Here is our overall leader, Philip Cheney, and going out right with him is the rider sitting fourth overall, Jared Jonker on that beta. Ryder Heacock into the stage, hoping to improve on his 12th place finish in Big Baldy. He really hasn't shown the speed since he won the MNR stage on Saturday. Here's Kevin Block. He's had some consistent runs here today on that KTM as he looks to move up in the overall standings. 
Aaron Wilkins, who led day number one, finds himself chasing the overall leader, Philip Cheney. As we look at Wilkins, he is away. His last three stages, he has been fourth, sixth, and fourth. He's got to make his move right now. And we got Connor Brogan putting a great ride this weekend so far. Fifth place, looking very solid. The results of stage seven of the Corduroy Enduro has Zach Lewis with the victory, his first stage win of the weekend. Philip Cheney in second, Jared Jonker followed him around to grab third, Aaron Wilkins in fourth, and Kevin Block rounds out the top five. From Scott and Sue's, the riders have a quick transit back to the start area. Pros have to impound for their final moto, but all the amateurs are done for the weekend. There is Kevin Block coming in to get his finisher medal. He, of course, along with only the pro riders, still have that moto test coming up. There's some of our amateur riders as they receive their medals. Christian Pickering and Daniel Nelson. For a lot of these amateur riders, it's a, it's a badge of honor to have a finisher's medal from the corduroy. Tony Sharpless is caught up with Jared Jonker. Yeah, I was uh, chasing Phil most of the day and trying to stay on his wheel, so. Yeah, he's good. Ah, uh, that's why Phil must have dropped back onto Jared's number, and now Jared became consistently fast through the afternoon test because with an experienced rider like Phil leading you through, you make a lot less mistakes. One final stage to go here in the Corduroy Enduro. Let's have a look at our current overall standings. There you see that almost insurmountable lead of a minute 32 seconds by Philip Cheney over Aaron Wilkins. Lewis right there in third. Jonkren Brogan round out your top five. And then it is Bluen, Kevin Block, Heacock, Cote, and Lepley. And look at the difference between Wilkins and Lewis. Only 23 seconds. Lewis has a lot of motocross experience. If Wilkins has any difficulty whatsoever, Lewis could catch him in this test and move into second overall. Ready for moto number one, Ryder Heacock on the inside, John Derek Cote, Jeremy Donnellan, Theo Lepley, Peter Rutziger, the five riders ready to go. Yeah, Ryder Heacock should be the fave in this. Got a lot of motocross experience. Gonna put that to work here. All eyes focused on the starter and we're away on the inside. Derek Cote just about took off the front wheel there of Ryder Heacock, but it is Heacock who comes out of that first turn with the lead. Motor number one is underway. Ryder Heacock, your race leader on the Yamaha, trying to hold off a hard charging Jean Derek Cote on that KTM as they continue to run one, two very close together here on the racetrack and Blair although they're going at each other here they're really racing against the clock. That's right Pat. Riders out front but he's got to push as hard as he can because the motos coming afterwards those riders could beat his time and it could put him back fourth fifth in the stage. Well we are on lap number four the last lap the run home to the checkered flag for race leader 7A rider Heacock aboard the Yamaha just a few more corners to go as Ryder Heacock has opened up a big advantage here over Cote on that KTM. Ryder last time over the logs, down through the tire pit, up over the big logs, and then he'll have to go down the finish chute to the timing tent. Outstanding ride here for Ryder Heacock aboard the Yamaha. The checkered flag is out, he has gone through. He will stop the clock at five minutes. 55.92 seconds, that will be the time to beat for the other riders coming up. There you see Jean Derek Cote through. Looks like he will be second. Dodolin up for third, followed in fourth by Theo Lepley, and then Peter Rutziger aboard that beta machine in fifth. Yeah, I think in this one, Aaron and Connor are gonna have a bit of a duel. It'll be interesting to see if they can beat riders time. We are off, hard charge into turn one. And you saw Aaron Wilkins just about get taken out there as he has grabbed the lead from Connor Brogan on that Husqvarna. So they run one, two, and for Aaron Wilkins, he knows he's gotta go out here and turn a very fast time if he has any chance of catching the overall leader, Philip Cheney. Close battle up front between Aaron Wilkins on the KTM, Connor Brogan on that Husqvarna. Then it's a bit of a gap back to the battle that's going on for third between Kevin Block and Jeremy Quinn. Right now, Quinn holding on to third. Block is on the charge. Aaron, Aaron had a nice line. He didn't even go in the water. He's up on the side of the 
little water pit there. The other thing Aaron has to worry about is Zach Lewis is only 23 seconds back, and Zach is a very fast motocrosser. Aaron Wilkins on the KTM continues to lead Moto2. He knows he's going to have to go out here and win this and hopefully beat that 5 minute 55.9 second opening moto time by Heacock who so far has been the fastest of the riders here in this final stage of day two and here is Aaron Wilkins led at the end of day one but he saw that lead evaporate very early Blair in this second day of competition and oh a problem there for the uh, number eight A machine Kevin Block well, it looks like Kevin's hung up quite a bit and Jeremy Twin goes by. He just cased that motorcycle on that big log. And now it is Jeremy Quinn who has moved up into third block, gets going in fourth. Jermaine Perron still holding on to that fifth place spot. Watching that fight that's starting to tighten up as well, Blair, for third between Kevin Block, who's trying to charge back. And oh, Quinn put the motorcycle into that tire trap and he goes down. Connor Brogan ahead of him, pulling well clear as Quinn really launched off the motorcycle here in that tire trap. Here comes the Kevin Block machine. He's going to take back that third place position. That's the same spot that uh, Quinn went by Block. Oh, that's nasty. He put the front wheel into one of the holes. Hard fall there for Jeremy Quinn aboard that Yamaha, losing that third place spot. He's now charging after Kevin Block as he takes a different line through that. He has a little bit of a problem here going through the tire trap as he continues to run a few bike lengths ahead of the fourth place rider. This is Jeremy Quinn on the Yamaha and Quinn goes down head first right into the tire for the second time. He's been caught out in the tire trap. Yeah, he, I don't know what it is about that with Jeremy Quinn there. He just doesn't seem to get the front end to clear the tires. So this is gonna give Kevin Block that third place finish after Quinn had closed, but then disaster at the tire trap. Here's a look at it in replay. Plants that front wheel into the side of the tire and he goes right over the handlebars. And the final results of Moto2, there you see Aaron Wilkins with the win. It is faster. He is the fastest rider so far in this eighth stage, Connor Brogan faster than that earlier time by Ryder Heacock. He has a good run. Kevin Block, Jeremy Quinn, and Jermaine Perron round out our top five. Moto3 is coming up next here at the Corduroy Enduro. Zach Lewis in this one, the charge into turn one, and Lewis on the inside storms into the lead as he has a go at it here with Jeremy Lantier. Then it is Bluen and Corsal, so four riders and Blair, no surprise here, Lewis goes right to the front. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna touch him in this race. The time to beat here in moto number three came in that second moto, won by Aaron Wilkins, a five minute 40.9 second time. But Lewis is doing what he has to do, go out there, lead, run fast, and hopefully his time is fast enough to put him into first place overall. Oh, and a rider goes down off that big tire jump. Yeah, that's Lanthier, so he won't be chasing Zach anymore. And you know, uh, Zach, looking at his lap times, he's got a shot at taking second away from Aaron Wilkins in this uh, moto, final stage of the weekend. Well, it is Zach Lewis on his last lap, heading for the checkered flag. Here he comes, and he'll roll through there. Zach Lewis wins it. It is faster, 5 minute 20. He'll move to the top of the order for now. Frederick Bluen, Lantier, and Corsal round out your top four. We've got moto number four coming up next with our points leader, Philippe Chaney. Had a quick calculation. Zach misses second by three seconds. He made up all but three seconds on Aaron in this final moto here. Getting set for moto number four, featuring our overall points leader, Philip Cheney, on the KTM. It's gonna be interesting to see if Philip goes out front and gets away from everybody to stay out of trouble, or if he's gonna play it safe and, and just take an easy ride and cruise to victory. There is Cheney, he grabs the whole shot, to lead him through turn one. Cheney coming into this final moto, with a minute and 32 second advantage over Aaron Wilkins, who's already had his moto a little bit earlier. And right now, Cheney opening up a bit of a gap early, going right after it. There is Jared Jonker holding on to second. 
third is the Ben Roth machine, the Tavistock Ontario rider on the KTM, and then Kenny Beach also on a KTM back and forth here on this opening lap of four. Oh, look at that. Cheney finally doubled those logs. First one all day. You know, we got to thank our uh, drone sponsor, Bart's Motorcycles, for these great shots from the drone. Again, great shot here of the riders going through the mud pit there and then up over the tires, but it is all Philip Cheney aboard the KTM, Jared Jonker on the beta holding on to second and then it is Roth and Beach rounding out the group of four here in this final moto. But right now, Cheney is on the charge, aggressively through the tire trap. And Blair, it looks like he is oh, on his way. Oh, Cheney, he almost lost and the just, front end. And we're just as we <laughs> said that, he almost put it on the ground. But Philip Cheney going after his very first overall corduroy enduro win. This is his fifth trip here to the Halliburton Highlands and right now he is in command as he tries to bring it home here for the win. Now remember the time to beat from that uh, Moto3 event won by Zach Lewis was five minutes and 20 seconds. So as the motos have gone on here, each successive moto has been quicker than the one ahead of it. Cheney over the log double for the last time, headed towards the mud pit. Last lap, going towards his first corduroy win. And we're back with our Bart's motorcycle drone. Bart is riding the event this year, and he's going to be our Ron Jackson Sportsmanship Award winner this year. Stopped to help a rider who needed assistance and gave up his own ride. And again, some great shots here. The racetrack that Philip Cheney has absolutely dominated here in this fourth moto. Cheney on his way to his very first corduroy enduro overall win a year ago. He was not able to compete here due to a back injury. We Cheney back. at the checkered flag. He will win moto number four. This, I believe, is going to be the fastest of the four motos as Cheney takes the win. Here is Jonker going through the tire trap for the final time up over that log and he'll bring it home to the checkered flag but it is cheney look at the time five minutes 6.8 seconds jared jonker ben roth kenneth beach round out our top four so philip cheney who as we said was not here a year ago when he was dealing with a back injury comes back here a year later to absolutely dominate day number two he wins six of the eight stages and wins this one by over two minutes. An incredible performance, Blair, for this veteran rider. Yeah, he's done just nothing wrong all weekend, really. And you know, Philip's not a big uh, flashy guy, but I saw him give a little twist and a rev on the throttle when he came through there. I guess that's the extent of his celebration. Well, it's been an outstanding weekend here in the Halliburton Highlands, the 64th. Corduroy Enduro, as they say, is in the books. Our congratulations to Philip Cheney, our overall winner, but to all of the riders, their teams, their family and friends who came out here to be part of this celebration of motorcycling in Northern Ontario, the winners of all of our other amateur classes, and of course, we'll be back here next year to do it all again. For Blair Sharpless and our entire ballistic film crew, this is Pat Gonzalez saying so long from the Halliburton Highlands and the Corduroy Enduro. Riding under blue skies, nothing's gonna bring me down. Riding under blue skies, crack the throttle, feel the wind blowing in my face. It's been a long day under the blue sky. It's been a fun day in the corduroy enduro Riding under blue skies Nothing's gonna bring me down Riding under blue skies Crack the throttle, feel the wind